we'll begin, guys. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today. And we're going to continue our simulation webinar series for 2016. And today, we're focusing on the express tools inside simulation. So um, that plays very nicely with the topic of our webinar, which is how to use the free simulation tools you already have in SOLIDWORKS. So if you're using SOLIDWORKS right now, you have both of the tools we're going to talk about today. And by the end of this webinar, you'll know how to properly activate them, use them, and you'll be able to try them out on your own parts and your own designs. So let's talk about what we'll cover today. I'd like to start with an introduction to what are the Express tools in SOLIDWORKS. What do they do? Why are they there? How can they be helpful? for you. Um, then we'll talk about actually how to start using them. Um, since 2015, there's an activation process, but luckily, guys, this is, is like a 30-second or 60-second process to get your Express tool activated. Then you can start using it. Um, we'll run through some simulation Express, we'll run through some flow Express, and then we'll open it up at the end for some Q&A. And this week, guys, we're just talking about the Express tools, but we're going to follow this up next week with another webinar that will be talking about going beyond the Express tools. So what are the limitations and what can you do with the full-fledged simulation and flow simulation? Now, what are the Express tools? We, we know SOLIDWORKS has some simulation capability and flow simulation capability. I'm sure you guys may have heard me talk about it before in other webinars or seen it on our, our great website. But um, the Express tools are specific, nice, first-pass tools that are available to everybody. Now, they're easy to use, they're quick, but they are for first-pass analysis, kind of for ballparking your designs. They're usually not detailed enough to make a final design decision on, certainly not detailed enough to, uh, to sort of send a design out to get a PN stamp or anything on it. Um, but what they will let you do is get a good idea of any, whether you're in the right ballpark, if you're close to breaking your design, or if you've got a really big safety factor, you can take some weight off it, etc. So, um, ballpark results for simple parts with simple loadings. Now, um, of course, there is complex stuff that would fall outside of that, but a lot of what we do as engineers and designers is simple parts and simple loadings and just running quick checks on things. And this is exactly where the Express tools can help. So, we're going to talk about Simulation Express, our structural analysis tool, and Flow Express, the fluid analysis tool. How do we activate the Express tools. So Express tools have been around in SolidWorks for a long time. Um, they've always been free to use, and they still are. But since 2015, you need to activate them before use. And it's just so SolidWorks has a handle of how many people are using them and how many people find them useful. So where do we find them? Well, to start with, they'll be on the Evaluate tab of your Command Manager. The same place your Measure button and Interference Detection and things like that are, you're going to see these two tools. Over here on the right in the red circle, my Simulation Express Wizard and my Flow Express Wizard. Now, the first time you click on either of these, you're going to get a message like this one below. And this is actually for DriveWorks Express, not Simulation Express, but same idea. It's going to tell you you need a product code for that. Well, the nice thing is there's a link. If you click next to that red arrow, the big MySolidWorks.com link, right there. It's going to log you into your MySolidWorks account. Um, if you don't have an account, you can create one very easily. All you need is your serial number, which you can get from SolidWorks, and, and an email address. Um, then it will generate a product code. You just copy and paste that in to your, uh, your Simulation Express window, click OK, and the tools are active. They never need to be activated again. It's just a one-time process. So. Very quick, very easy, and this gives SolidWorks an idea of how, um, uh, basically, how many people are using the tools by tracking those activations. So, um, again, those are the steps. Click the link, log into your account, and then copy and paste the code into the activation window. Well, let's talk about Simulation Express first. So, what's good about it? What's bad about it? Well, Simulation Express is a finite element analysis tool. And I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that. So um, any finite element analysis program is going to take your part, break it down into thousands of tiny little pieces with very simple to solve deflection equations. And what we're actually solving for here is how much the part bends. Now, once we figure out how much it deflects or bends, we can back calculate how much the model actually stretched as that happened. 
And if we know how much the model has stretched, or as we would call it in engineering terminology, how much strain the model sees, well, with that and the material properties, we can calculate stress. We can find out how heavily loaded your part is and how close you are to breaking or yielding your material. So what are some of the pros and cons? Well, it's a great first pass tool, as I mentioned. And you'll hear me keep saying this. I'm kind of talking it down a little bit. Um, and there's good reason for it, and I'll show you that. But it's very easy to use, it's very fast, and you can get more insight into how your design will behave through five minutes of Sim Express than you could out of a, a lot of hand calculations. Now, um, it wouldn't be truthful of me to tell you all this good stuff without telling you some of the cons as well. It's only good for single parts. So if you have assemblies or multiple parts uh, that you'd like to, to run, um, you can't do it. You need to break it down into one part. Now, it's very simple. Um, now, that does lead to the question, is it too simple? Anytime we have a what we would call a black box analysis tool, where it's giving us some answers, but we don't really have full control over the setup, it can make us a little nervous. As engineers, we don't know what's going on in the background. So there may be a little bit too much simplicity here. It may not be totally transparent. Um, we have limited mesh control limited fixtures and loadings, as we'll see, and limited results. But that still that does not mean it's not a useful tool, and let's demonstrate that right now. So what are the steps? We're going to start. We're going to apply some materials to a part. We'll apply some fixtures. We'll apply some loads. We'll mesh it, and we'll look at the results. We'll see how much the part deforms, what the stress looks like, and how close we are to breaking. So let's do it. Well, I'm going to switch over into SolidWorks, and I am going to look at a small little bracket part. So let's open this up. You guys have probably seen this model before. Very simple for regular simulation, but this is the kind of thing that works very well with Simulation Express. So how do I start an analysis on this? Well, I'm going to go over to this Evaluate tab. And then I'll find my Simulation Express Analysis Wizard. So I've already activated this product, so I'm not going to see the activation screen come up. But when I click on this, here we go. It pops up this little side window. So welcome to Simulation Express. Um, now, uh, I've already defined one here, so I'm just going to say Start Over. And uh, this is what you'll typically see. So it's going to walk you through this process, the same steps I just showed on the slide, step by step. First thing, apply fixtures to keep the part from moving when your loads are applied. In other words, how is this part being restrained or held down? Well, when we do this, um, all I need to do is click the Add a Fixture button right here, and it pops up my fixtures. Now, we only have one type of fixture we can apply, which is Fixed Geometry. You can see the animation there. It's just going to take a face and fix it completely rigidly. Now, this can be a little bit unrealistic, and you'll actually see that at warning over on the right side here. Faces with fixtures are treated as perfectly rigid. This can cause unrealistic results in the vicinity of the fixture. So is my fixed restraint up here going to cause issues down near this pillet? No, probably not. But if I'm looking for accurate stresses up near this face, um, the fully fixed geometry is going to over-constrain the face a little bit. We'll make it too stiff because that face can't shrink or grow or move even a tiny bit. So I'm going to apply this fixed geometry to the top face, and I'll click OK. There we go. So I can now go in and add another fixture to the part, or I can edit one of the ones that I put in. But in my case, I'm done. I just want to hang the part, basically, by that top face, and we'll apply a load to the bottom open face here. So I'm going to click the Next button. All right, now loads. So we've told it how it's being held. How are we going to load it? And I can add two things. I could either add forces or pressures. Difference being, well, a force is just a single point force. I can define how many newtons or how many pounds are acting on a face. But pressure, um, we're now defining a distributed pressure. How many megapascals or PSIs are acting on a face? So in my case, I'd like to simulate a 900 newton load. It's about 200 pounds pulling straight downwards on that face there. So I'm going to click the Add a Force button. Now, where do I want to apply it? Well, I'll just click on this face. 
normally, um, or I, I guess uh, the standard when you click on a face like that, is the load is applied normal to the face or perpendicular to the face. So it's pressing inwards right now. I don't want that. Instead of the normal button on the top left, I'm going to go to selected direction. And now I can choose basically a plane to use for reference. And I'd like to push downwards. So I'm going to grab a plane that's normal to that direction. I'll grab my top plane. So as soon as I select that in the reference box, you'll see my arrows are now going in the up and down direction. Specifically, they're going up. I'm going to flip this with the reverse direction tag so they're going down. And I'll say 900 newtons. Now, if you're not comfortable working in newtons or metric, you'd prefer pounds, you can go ahead and do that. I can switch over to pounds. And you'll see yeah, it's just over a 200 pound load there. It'll convert it for you. In fact, why don't I say that's a 210 pound load. OK. I'll click the OK button. And we now have the load applied. So I can add more loads, more pressures if I'd like to, edit the existing ones. But I am going to click Next and move on. So the final thing we need to do is choose a material. So if there's no material assigned to the part, what would I like to do here? Well, I'm going to choose one. So I'm going to choose a material. I'm going to choose a 304 steel for this. You'll notice all these different materials in the material library here. We have various steels, irons, aluminums, um, very as well. But I will mention these are all linear materials, guys. So when we look at a material like this 304 steel, we're only using the four properties that are shown in red here. The elastic modulus, or the stiffness of the material, the yield strength, the Poisson's ratio, and the density. But the two big ones are the yield strength. This is where the material starts to yield or permanently deform. And the elastic modulus, which is the stiffness of the material. So I'm going to apply this and close it. And there we go. We have 304 steel. There's the stiffness. There's the yield strength. I can change it if I'd like. I'm going to click Next. Well, the next step um, is actually running the simulation. But you'll notice there's this Change Settings option. I can solve with the default settings or adjust them to better suit my needs. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. When I go to Settings, what I can do here is change the mesh density of the part. And mesh density is something that's um, uh, a very important topic. And, and we could spend a lot of time talking about this, guys. But I will, um, I, I'll just briefly show you guys a, a few little teasers on that. So what we do when we break a part down into thousands of tiny little pieces uh, called elements, SolidWorks solves the stress equations for those. And the more elements we have, the better the results are going to be, the more accurate they'll be. However, um, there is a trade-off. If you go really, really fine elements, lots of elements all the time, you're going to find out um, that your analyses take longer than they need to, to run. So, Typically what we'll do, we'll start with a coarse mesh or, or coarse pieces and we'll try out a few finer steps. We'll make the elements finer and finer and finer and see how the stress changes. And usually the stress will shoot up a little bit and then when you get fine enough, that stress will stabilize. So this is something we don't have a ton of control over in Simulation Express, but we do have some control. So I can go in and change my mesh density with this button. And you'll see I get this slider here um, that goes from a default mesh to very coarse or very fine. Now, I'm just going to leave it the default for now, and I'll come back to this in a moment. So when I click the OK button there, it runs through and it meshes this. So I'm going to say, let's run my simulation. Well, the first thing you see is this little animation of the part wiggling around, and it asks me questions over on the right. It says, does the part deform as we expected? Well, yes, I'm pulling down on it. It's flexing downwards. That's what I'd expect to see. If this were twisting side to side or bending upwards instead of downwards, I'd click the No button, and I'd return to my loads and fixtures and, and fix what I did wrong. So yes, it deformed as I expected. Here we go. Here's my results. So I can show stress, displacement, or safety factor. It actually tells me here my lowest safety factor is 2.4. So before I do anything, I could actually increase the loads two and a half times almost before I start yielding the structure. Well, what does the stress distribution look like? I'm going to click on the Show Von Mises Stress. 
And one needs his stress, don't be scared by that, guys. It's just an average stress condition. It's a nice average value. It doesn't differentiate between tension or compression, but it tells me how close I am to yielding. So right now, we're up at about 85 MPA. This material yields at 206 MPA. So yeah, we have a safety factor of about 2.5. I can see where my highest stresses are, and that's right in this inside corner. And if we look at the back face here, for example, I can see the front and back skin are loaded very, very heavily, but the neutral axis, that section running right down the center, that's very low stress. Same thing on the bottom. My top and bottom skins are stressed, but my middle is very low stress right now. Great to know, if I want to remove material from this part, the blue parts, the least stressed parts, are the ones carrying the least amount of load, and they'd be where I'd want removing material. So I can animate this and see how that stress builds as it flexes. I can see that stress shrinking and growing. Now, I can also not just see the stress, but I can see how much this deforms as well. So let's click on Show Displacement. All right, I deform about 0 0.295 millimeters, so 0.3 millimeters at the tip right there. And of course, that goes all the way down to 0 where I have it restrained. Where I put the fixture, it's not flexing at all. So that's what I can do with this, and I know my safety factor is about 2.5 right now. Um, if I want to, let's say I was aiming for a safety factor of 3.5, I can use this tool here. I can say, show me where my safety factor is less than my desired value. That's going to flag that. It's just at that inside fillet. So maybe I increase that fillet radius. Maybe I go in and um, I change the thickness of the, the um, both sides of this part as well. Add some more material there to take the stress down. So um, a few things I can do here as well. Notice how choppy that result looks. Or if I show my stress plot, how choppy, jagged that looks. And it says we're about 86 MPA stress. Well, I'm going to go back and actually change my mesh. So if I go back a little bit and do that change settings, I'm going to change my mesh density. I'm going to move this all the way to the fine side right now. And we're going to run it again. You'll see it's going to smooth out those results a little bit, but our stress is going to increase a little bit as well. So, yes, it deforms like we expected. What does the stress look like? Well, you'll notice it's smoother. My stress has actually jumped from 87 up to about 102 in here. So um, my safety factors drop from about 2.4 to 2.0. So that mesh is very important. And, and typically what we'd recommend is trying that mesh in smaller and smaller and smaller sizes until you see this stress stop changing. That's when you can be fairly comfortable you have a true stress. But ballpark, safety factor of two. So that is SolidWorks um, Simulation Express some great tools we can use to evaluate how loads and fixtures change, um, or how loads and fixtures affect our part, and we can very quickly change geometry and jump back into it. Now, um, I'd like to take a short break, and we're going to change gears here, guys, and we're going to talk about SolidWorks flow simulation. But first, a In summary, um, Simulation Express is very good at finding out how your parts will deform and react under stresses and loads. It's very limited. Um, now, how is it limited? Well, we only have that one fixture, fixed geometry. We only have two um, loads we can apply, and we really have no control over the meshing processor. Very, very limited control. But for parts like that, if you're trying to get a ballpark sort of thumb-in-the-wind answer of how close are you, this will be very, very useful to you. Now, we're going to talk about our Flow Express tool. Now, Flow Express is our fluid simulation software. Um, very similar to our Sim Express tool, it has some pros and cons. It's very easy to use. It's a great tool for checking flow velocities and visualizing your flow. So you can see how the fluid moves, where it's moving the fastest and the slowest, and if you have any recirculation or stagnation areas. And, it's going to give you some great animations that give you great insight into how fluid reacts with your part. Now, what are the cons? Just like our Sim Express tool, Flow Express has some limitations. It's only good for very simple geometry. There's very limited boundary conditions we can apply, so pressures and, and velocity openings. Um, really no mesh control 
at all, and we can't do anything related to pressure. You can't calculate pressures or pressure drops, etc. But let's have a look. I'll show you guys firsthand. So I'll switch into SolidWorks, and we're going to look at this little ball valve right here. So what does it look like? Well, I've got a ball valve um, open on both ends. See the ball inside it? It's just a little bit past closed or a little bit past uh, fully open right now. It's just slightly impinging on the flow there. So what do I need to do to run a flow express study? Well, the first thing, I need to make sure my fluid volume is capped or lidded. So SolidWorks flow simulation needs a fully closed model. Well, what do I do when I have open ends like this? I'm just going to add some lids in this. Now, I'll show you how quick I can do that. I'm in the assembly. I'm going to add a new part starting right on that face. And I'm just going to take this edge here, and I'm going to convert that over into my sketch and do a really simple extrusion. So I'm going to say we just need it one millimeter thick here, but I need it going into my model like this. So there's a little bit of overlap between my lid and my model, just like that. Well, now that I have one lid in the model, I can easily copy and paste that. So if I just hold Control and I drag this one over, I'm going to make a second lid and I can make this one into place. I'll say, let's go concentric between this edge and the hole, and then I'll make this face flush with this face. Now, we're fully lidded here. So, we are ready to run a Flow Simulation Express study. Same steps, guys. I'm going to go to my Evaluate tab. I'm going to find my Flow Express Analysis Wizard. Turn it on. So, here we go. Um, it's asking me now, where is my inlet for the flow? And there's a couple different ways I can define this. I can define a pressure opening, a volume flow rate, or a mass flow rate. And it depends on what you're doing. If you know you have a certain mass flow rate, like um, 0.1 kilograms per second of water flowing through this, you can choose that. Um, if you know you have a certain volume going through it, you could do that. Or if you just know a pressure differential, you have two atmospheres pressure at the inlet, open to one atmosphere pressure at the outlet, you can set it up that way. Now, I'm going to run through, and you know what? Um, actually, it jumped through a couple different steps here as I started. I, I think I accidentally clicked. So here we go. Here is the, uh, the starting screen for Flow Express, and it does give you that warning about making sure openings are completely closed with lids. It also gives you a funky little warning down here saying, don't base your decision solely on information from this study. So just because it's so limited, here, guys, in capability, um, it's just saying don't make any crucial decisions based on a 30-second analysis, which is, is probably some good common sense. Now, um, I'm going to click the Next button. Um, I can see my fluid volume if I'd like to, and you'll see it actually visualizes where my fluid is, and I can see the fluid inside the ball valve. That gives me an idea of how closed or open the ball valve is. Now I get to choose what I'm pushing through this valve. Is this water or air? Now again, our full-fledged full, uh, flow simulation, you can choose any liquid you'd like. And you can actually have up to 10 liquids in the same domain. Um, we're limited to just water or air. I'm going to do water. And now we'll get into defining the, the actual boundary conditions or inlets. I'd like to define a mass flow rate of water going through this inlet. So how do I do it? Well, I can choose this face here, but as I go through and change a face, it warns me. It says this selected face does not contact the fluid, or it's the external face of the model. Well, this is an interesting technique where a lot of people get stuck with flow sim. They go, well, okay, I can't do my boundary conditions. Well, what I can do here, guys, is um, basically pick the face of my lid that's touching the fluid. So instead of the outside face, I can use my Select Other tool. I'm just going to right-click and choose Select Other. That lets me select through this face and grab this interface that's actually touching the fluid right there. So this is going to work. I'm going to say, let's actually run, uh, let's say 0.3 kilograms per second of water through this. And I'll click the Next button. Well, now my outlet. So my outlet, if I specified a flow rate for my inlet, my outlet has to be a pressure condition. So I'm going to go in here and do the same thing. I'll use the Select Other tool to grab the inside face. 
I could leave this at standard atmospheric pressure, 101.3 kPa, or I could change it. If I want to run this with some back pressure, uh, twice atmospheric pressure, three times, I could do that. So I'll click Next. And the last thing I see here is solve. So we have even less control over the solver parameters than we do in Simulation Express. In Simulation Express, at least we could change the mesh density a little bit and try out different meshes. In Flow Express, we really can't. But it's a quick, quick first pass analysis. This should be good enough for us. So I'll just click solve. Now, it's going to go here and solve the model. You'll see the status bar going through. It'll say it's meshing and then solving. This might take anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes to run, but it's going to be pretty quick. You'll see it's solving, 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 and it's going to finish very quickly and say, there we go, completed. And it starts showing me some flow trajectories in here. So what can I do with this? Well, I'm going to play my trajectories to start with. I can see how the fluid comes in, and you'll notice it starts out very slow as it comes in here. And then as the fluid necks down into that small little channel, it actually speeds up. We see a pressure drop, a velocity increase. The velocity shoots up, and we see the fluid flying through the rest of the valve. Now, I might actually hide or change the transparency of this handle part so I can see what's going on underneath it. See, some of the fluid's actually recirculating in there. If you guys saw that little loop, well, what else can I show? Well, I can actually show some other um, parameters and, uh, well, sorry, not other parameters, other number of, um, of pipes or tubes here. So let me show you a couple of things. I'm going to crank up the number of trajectories from 20 all the way up to 50. It's just like turning up your resolution. I'm now tracking more points through here. You can see how they flow. I can see, again, some of those looping around and recirculating back there and then flowing out. Well, what if I want to see a different representation of this? These lines or pipes are good to visualize wall time. So I can see some of the fluid moves very, very quick, and then other fluid bits are moving very, very slowly and looping, like we see back here. Let's me know relatively what's moving fast and what's moving slow. But a very useful way to look at this is these balls. If I switch over to balls and I play it again, this is more of a steady state animation. So it's going to keep playing like this. And I can see how quick the fluid um, basically picks up speed inside the model. And I can also see that recirculation happening. I've got one bit of very, very slow fluid. So I can actually rotate this around and see exactly where that's happening. It's near this closed edge of the ball valve where there's really nowhere for that flow to, to exit. So it's hitting the edge of the ball and then recirculating a bit before flowing out of the tank. Well, lots of great things I can get out of this. I can see um, my maximum velocity is about four and a half meters per second in here. And I can see where that is. That's going to be the ho basically hottest color balls or pipes in here, right in the center. So those red ones, that's four and a half. My inlet, well, that's much, much slower. That's coming in around uh, somewhere in the light blue range, maybe around one meter per second. The green stuff in here near the edges, um, that green stuff is up in sort of the two and a half to three range, etc. Now, I can take various pictures as well. Use this little snapshot button. I'll say, let's take a picture of this. Maybe I'll switch it over to pipes and I'll take a picture of this. You can see other recirculation as well. I haven't really talked about this, but this is tracking either 50 points coming from the inlet or 50 points coming from the outlet. So you can get a little bit more resolution in your outlet or inlet areas by changing that section. And then finally, I can generate a very quick report if I'd like to. I can say, let's generate a report. It takes a moment, and it's just going to launch this into Word very quickly uh, into whatever document template you have set. It's going to include any snapshots that you've taken, like those two that I have. It's also going to give you maximum velocity as well as the boundary conditions. So again, we use 0.3 kilograms a second of water at room temperature, and the outlet was open to environmental pressure at room temperature. That's the velocity profile we see. Now, this gives me some good insight 
in here. I could try this out at various different open or closed positions of the valve, see how the flow trajectory differs. Um, but I am going to be limited. If I'm looking to calculate a pressure drop, if I want more detail or more refinement around some areas, if I want to get more details out of my results um, or set up complex goals, turbulence, pressures, uh, drag coefficients, head loss, etc., cetera, um, I need to move to the full-blown flow simulation product. But um, hopefully today we've given you a bit of an intro um, into what these express tools are and how they can help you in your designs. So again, flow, great for visualizing how the fluid flows inside your design. You can check fluid speeds, recirculation, stagnation, but you are very limited compared to full flow simulation. One inlet, one outlet, no pressure control, and just like the SimExpress tool, we have really limited meshing and result options as well. But we think back to what we said these were going to be used for, which is sort of quick and dirty, first pass analysis. These are excellent tools. Um, even showing you guys how to set these up and going fairly slowly, we managed to do a couple of analyses in half an hour here and get some insight out of our designs. Thank you guys. I hope it's been a useful webinar. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how to use your Express tools and then kind of what the Express tools are all about. Now, again, join us next week. We're going to be talking about going beyond these Express tools. I've kind of hinted at how they're limited, but we'll talk really about how they're limited and what real simulation tools can get you next week. So thanks, guys, and have a great afternoon. Now, sorry, um, yeah, I just forgot about one last thing here, which would be the question and answer part of this. Um, we have some questions that have been in here, uh, that have been put in. Um, first thing, what if a fixture only covers a portion of a plane? Now, um, I imagine that would be a, a question on what if you don't want to fix a whole face, like we had on that L bracket. I'll just show you guys a really quick way to do that. If I had a fixture that I just wanted to cover this top, like half of this top face, I could do a split line very quickly. So what I'll do, I'm going to jump in and just do a new sketch on, whoops, not edit the sketch. You could do a new sketch on this face and I'll just draw a line from here down to here. Now that line isn't enough to split the face. It's still just one face with a line in it. But if I go to my Curves tab now and do a split line, I can do this. I just need to choose which sketch I'd like to project and what face I'd like to split. So I'm going to say, this is the sketch I'm going to project. This is the face I'd like to split. OK. Well, now it's two separate faces. I could apply a fixture to this face or this face or both. So hopefully that answers the first question. Um, let me jump into the other questions. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Uh, let me just pull up those questions again. There we go. Um, can you apply a point load at the end of the bracket instead of over the entire face? Um, no. In this case, we can't. Um, when we start our simulation uh, express tools, we are pretty limited. We have to use faces for loads. I'll just show you. That's the only option, faces. In full-blown simulation, yeah, you can choose points, you can choose vertices, you can choose, um, uh, yeah, faces, surfaces, etc. cetera. Um, SimExpress, just faces. Now, um, we had another question. What if the applied force or pressure is only on a portion of a face, not the whole face? Well, I'd refer back to the same answer I gave on the split lines right now, um, which is uh, just go in, create a split line. You can define your loading region wherever you'd like. All right. Um, next thing, uh, in SimExpress, can you change the deformation scale or will Express select a value for you? Um, you are limited to the basically what SolidWorks uh, simulation gives you. You can't manually change the deformation scale. As far as I know, I'm just going to check this right now. Let me uh, let me just quickly next 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 run it. Oh, you know what? This is what's happened. My fixture broke because I, I split this face on top. I'm just going to go in and 
fix that. We'll run it again. I don't think we can change the deformation scale. So, um, is there an option? So, in full-blown simulation, you do it down here. No. You see, I, I don't get access to my settings or definition of the plot, so I cannot change the deformation scale. Um, now, that's all the questions we had asked at the moment, guys. Are there anything else? Uh, any other questions? I'll leave this open for a minute or two if anybody else would like to type some. Okay, here we go. Um, I spend a lot of time tweaking the meshing value in Simulation Express. Is there a quick way to set this value? Um, no, unfortunately, you're limited to the controls you you have in Sim Express. In full blown Sim, we have tons of mesh control. All we have here really is this. I can go back and back again and do the change settings, change mesh density, and here we go. So I've got the slider bar. I also have my mesh parameters window down here. You'll see this is linked the slider bar. What this is telling me is how large my global element size is and then a tolerance value. So for instance, the default, it's going to try and use 4.8 millimeter elements everywhere. Um, but obviously it needs to wrap those around corners and geometry. So it's going to try and squeeze those kind of 4.8 plus or minus that 0.24 in there. Um, so if you're trying to use the exact same mesh size, study to study or set exact mesh sizes, you can actually type it in. I can type in a two millimeter mesh in there, and that will work. But again, we are kind of limited. We only have the one measure as opposed to the three different measures in full-blown simulation. And um, we can't really do any local mesh refinement. You have to kind of dial it down everywhere or um, uh, leave it coarse everywhere. So hopefully that answers that. Another question here, is it possible to run optimization with Simulation Express? Not really. Um, now, let me just quickly show you what I mean here. Let me jump through and run this again. So it's going to run quickly. Yes, it deforms like I expected. Say so done viewing results. That's basically it. There is no real way. Um, well, let me click next. Ah, there we go. There is, and, and I kind of forgot about this. So you can optimize this. It's not like full-blown optimization in SolidWorks uh, Simulation Professional. This will let you do a very, very simple optimization with one dimension, basically. So I'll show you. I could go in and change this wall thickness in here if I wanted to. And I could say, actually, let's try that between, uh, let's say, 18 mil and 30 mil, something like that. Next, what's my constraint? Well, I can go in and say, my constraint is I need a stress, maximum stress of 100 MPA. Oh, this is in Newton, so that would be There we go, um, 100 MPA, and then I could run it. And it's going to do a very, very simple thing here. It's going to try this one dimension at, at larger and smaller values and try and zero in on that maximum stress. So will work. You'll see it runs through multiple scenarios here. I'm not fully solved today, but it is possible. It is very, very rudimentary, though. One variable, one constraint. In full-blown simulation, we can very easily run this with up to 25 variables and up to 40 constraints on the part. So what other questions do we have right now? Um, let me just pull up the questions window. And I am not seeing any other questions right now, guys, unless it's in a different window. Nope. Um, those are all the questions we have for today. So hopefully um, that's been very useful to you guys. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. And once again, thank you for your time. Join us next week for part two, Beyond the Express Tools.